The Great Ocean Road, Victoria, Australia. While we've spent our time here learning how the locals preserve and honour their community, we'd yet to experience one fundamental Australian symbol. It's wildlife. Enter the Great Ocean Road Wildlife Park. Set amongst the rolling green hinterland, this location is dedicated to the preservation of the natural state of wildlife. Owner and operator Joseph Lasaro believes that a sustainable mindset is the key to doing so. And while this park promotes the livelihood of many creatures, it is the Australian dingo that I'm here to see. While having a significant role in the natural ecosystem, the dingo was nearly wiped out by colonists who perceived the creature as a threat. This ongoing belief has led to a disruption of nature and misunderstanding of this animal. So Joseph has made it a passion to raise awareness to the true nature of this beautiful creature. They are an effective, uh, incredible animal within the ecosystem and no threat to human beings. I'd like to take you in there. You'll get to meet the incredible love and sensitivity that these animals have. They're almost conscious not only of environmental systems but of human involvement as well. They're so sensitive that they know exactly where you are, they know where you're going and they know where you have to get to. Just give them a half an hour, they'll draw it out of you, they'll bring you to a quiet standstill and they'll draw the best out of you. I would be honoured to, to do that with you. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Before we go in, let's just say it's really, really important just in terms of understanding animal behaviour. Um, what triggers a dingo or a wolf to, to react is an animal in distress. So if they see an animal that's injured, sick, wounded, vulnerable, bleeding, whatever the case, that actually releases a hormone in their system which then drives them for the kill for that specific animal. So what you don't want to do in the presence of a dingo or wolf is start screaming because you kicked your baby toe. The other thing is um, when we go in, this is their territory, it's their home. But we respect to them. Let them come up to you first, let them smell you and accept you. Once they accept you, then you can, you can really get to know them, you can pat them, you can, they like to jump on laps, they like to lick faces. You should know that licking of the faces is uh, acceptance, is accepting you. So this is the male who's come before the female? Always. He'll, he'll take everything first. He'll take the food, he'll check for danger, and then she'll come in after him. Wow. So dingoes, when they meet their partner, they partner for life? For life. For life. If the male or the female gets separated, what goes through? They would go into instant distress. Like even within one minute, if he didn't, didn't know where she was, he would want to know. And if he couldn't find her, that distress would actually turn into a depression. And then after a couple of days, he would stop eating and he would actually die unless he found her. Wow, what a beautiful animal. Yeah, really, really beautiful. How many dingoes are there actually left in the wild in the state of Victoria? Well, in Victoria, there are, there's 21 left, as far as I know. Um, but the truth is that nobody really knows the numbers because they've always been considered a, a pest or a woman. What can we do, not just here in Australia, but globally, to support uh, preserving and protecting uh, this beautiful animal? I think if people really knew their natural role, which is to keep ecosystems in balance, they work with animal populations, overpopulating and underpopulating, they will keep them, if they overpopulate, they'll, they'll bring the numbers down to a sustainable level. If they're underpopulating, they'll actually protect them from other predators so that their numbers can bounce back. Um, and in so doing, they're actually keeping not only the animal populations uh, in balance, but also the flora as well, because they're controlling sort of the consumption rates of, of the animals on, on the earth. So they play this critical, critical role. Oh my goodness, this is probably one of, this is the most spiritual connection I've ever had with an animal. You know, it's not every day that you get to encounter wildlife in its natural habitat, let alone be able to have an intimate moment with a dingo. But it's just opened up my heart. It makes me realize how much work we as humans have to do. Um, to gain their respect. You know, they are our teachers and we can't fail them. We've got to do a lot to protect this animal here in Australia and um, to spread their message.